One way Counter-Strike's defenses against cheating could be improved would be to give VAC more power. Unlike VAC in its present state, which behaves like a basic background program when Counter-Strike's running that's looking for cheats, a kernel-based anti-cheat, like the one that Faceit uses or the one seen in Valorant, exists in a much deeper and more permanent state within your PC, and has far greater access to your system's inner workings, which probably would help to make it more effective at scanning for and for detecting more different kinds of cheats than VAC can, which is often operating with fewer privileges than the cheats it's trying to detect. So why wouldn't Valve design a more robust kernel-level anti-cheat? Because they don't care. They don't care that people are cheating so long as they're still making money. It's because of money that I think Valve does care. Because while Valve moves in mysterious ways or appears sometimes not to be moving at all, I don't think Valve is stupid. I believe they're one of the more long-sighted companies in the industry and will be well aware that rampant cheating is ruining their game's reputation and credibility, which in the long run definitely will affect their bottom line. So that's how I know they care, because of money. The problem with kernel-level anti-cheat is that it's invasive. As it's always active and always scanning, it may affect your PC's performance, even if you're not currently playing the game it's for, even if you haven't played that game in months. Star Force. Not to be mistaken for Starfield, Star Force managed to be even worse by being a heavy-handed piracy prevention system that was used to protect popular games like Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, X2, Trackmania Nations, and Horse Race Manager. If, like me, you enjoyed playing those games, then Star Force would be in your PC, up in your kernels and stuff, installing deep layer root kits to try and prevent you from pirating things. This horrible piece of software was claimed to slow CD drives to a crawl, and I believe this would stop me from using my disk imaging software, which I was using for totally legit reasons like to run digital copies of my family DVDs and to get my pirated games working. And if you install games with Starforce on newer versions of Windows, then it can actually break the operating system. Now, it's hard to tell how much these problems were from Starforce and how many were just from people generally being terrible with their PCs. Was it really why your games were blue screen of deathing, or was that because of your 200 watt power supply? Did Starforce really cause CDs to spin so fast they shattered? Or were all these things just rumours spread by disgruntled cracking teams who were struggling to bypass the copy protection system? Fortunately, other protection systems came along which no longer punished users for using them. Oh wait, they still did. It's like the gaming industry will never learn, isn't it? Back to anti-cheat now, and another problem with kernel-level anti-cheat is that it has privileged access to all sorts of inner PC workings, meaning these anti-cheats also double as security risks should they be tampered with in some way, like how ESEA's client mined Bitcoin on players' PCs for a while, apparently exploiting 14,000 PCs to earn a grand total of less than $2,000 a week. At least we know where we sit with VAC, and it makes it even more humiliating for a cheat to get a VAC ban. Because with VAC, it may be slow to detect the cheats, but once it's done that and somebody's received a VAC ban, then you can be pretty sure that they were cheating. And that's an important fact for Valve to maintain, because that's the value of VAC right there, to act as proof that that person was cheating. Or was using AMD drivers that one time when AMD was injecting stuff into the game's files, which is effectively cheating. Players weren't too happy with that, and I can't imagine Valve was either and they quickly dealt with the situation in order to maintain VAC's reputation. Though, for a while, even humble old VAC with its limited privileges was accused of doing naughty, naughty things like to spy on your browsing habits. Imagine that. VAC, and by extension Gabe Newell, might even know what sort of porn you're watching. Such filthy accusations prove that not even Gabe Newell himself is immune to responding to internet trolls, and in 2014, he posted publicly on Reddit about how VAC worked. He talked about how Valve doesn't like to talk about VAC because informing people about how it works makes it more vulnerable to abuse. But then he talks about how it works anyway, revealing that one of the ways VAC worked was to check to see if cheat subscriptions were calling home to a very specific internet address. And by getting him to say all that, Gabe revealed he wasn't interested in your porn habits. And second, cheat makers learned of another way to abuse VAC, although it sounds like their cheats had already bypassed this anti-cheat method by that point already. It's a constant game of cat and mouse. Hunter becomes hunted. Prey becomes predator. Kind of sounds like my browsing history, doesn't it, Gabe? It's quite interesting to see how Gabe speaks of there being different ways of attacking systems like VAC, one of these ways being to post publicly about how bad or invasive it is. Indeed, look up people talking about Valorant's prestigious anti-cheat system, and you'll find people complaining about how it breaks their PC or slows stuff down. It makes you wonder how much of these are valid complaints, how many of these are just there to discredit these systems, and how many are just innocent people with a problem with their PC who assume it must be the anti-cheat because they've heard other people complaining about it previously. 
So there you go. Even if VAC became kernel level, it wouldn't make it the ultimate solution and it wouldn't be without its haters and additional problems. But the biggest problem is that it still wouldn't stop all cheats. Okay, it might stop the normal cheats and the kernel level ones, but it would still struggle to detect cheats embedded within the PC hardware itself. It wouldn't be able to detect a second PC plugged into the first that's being used to cheat on. It wouldn't detect a thing in your mouse that scans pixels around the crosshair to subtly jump to certain shapes or colors. And yes, cheat makers can even use AI these days to help with this sort of stuff. And as these elaborate cheating methods develop, kernel-based anti-cheat becomes increasingly helpless, while still being addled with all the same security and performance issues that kernel-level anti-cheats are typically blamed for having. You remember that scene at the end of Batman? That one about escalation, where if police start carrying weapons, criminals wear body armor. Then if police throw Batman at the criminals, then the criminals will chuck the Joker back at them, and so on. That is the route that Valorant's Vanguard system is going down. It's having to fight an increasingly elaborate game of cat and mouse with the cheat makers, which in turn breeds a more hardened type of cheat writer who can then apply their sophisticated knowledge and skills to other games like Counter-Strike. This video here is a great watch, showing the different types of advanced cheats and how they bypass anti-cheat methods. And it's made so much better by the soft AI spoken female voice that occasionally breaks character by talking like a confrontational 4chan user. And remember, only poors cheat on alts. If you're going to cheat, you better do it on your main with thousands of dollars worth of skins. I love you all. I mentioned earlier that Valve would want to do something about cheating because they stand to lose money if they don't. But the issue of money works both ways. And for cheat writers, what's the point? Why bother writing a complicated and costly cheat for Counter-Strike where you can just write a simpler one that can still defeat VAC? Something Gabe said in that Reddit post from 10 years ago was telling. I quote, Kernel level cheats are expensive to create and they are expensive to detect. Our goal is to make them more expensive for cheaters and cheat creators than the economic benefits they can reasonably expect to gain. So first off, if a cheat creator is doing it for fun, then they bypass all of what I'm about to say. There's not a lot you can really do about those people. But for the majority of players who will be cheating, they're not going to be writing their own cheats. They're there to cheat to get enjoyment from beating other people in the game. And to do this, they're going to be using cheats written by somebody else. Some of these people will be using free cheats, others will be using ones that cost money. And Valve targets both these groups in different ways. On the surface, Gabe's quote sounds like he's all for VAC becoming kernel level to make it more costly for cheaters and cheat makers alike. But the game actually took a different approach to making it more costly. Firstly, by creating trust factor to make it more about investing the hours into building a robust account than to actually spend money on that account. Which ironically makes it more costly for cheat makers to try and bypass because they then have to devise an army of bots to grind the system in servers somewhere. Which itself is a whole other game of cat and mouse between cheaters and Valve, but a costly system for cheat makers to maintain also. The other way in which Valve tackled sophisticated and paid for cheats was to introduce Overwatch. Because when you're being judged by viewers, it doesn't matter how the cheat works. No matter how powerful the system or how sneakily it's being implemented, if it's judged to be cheating, then it'll get a ban. This still isn't a solution, it just means that cheats have to be more subtle so that they don't get caught out by Overwatch cases. Either by corrupting the match recordings, which happened for a while, or by sabotaging the Overwatch system, which I suspect happened towards the end of CSGO's lifetime. Or, lastly, by cheating so subtly that it doesn't get picked up by human review, which I suspect is currently a big issue with the game. Yes, the player base has become much more skilled over the years, but how much of that is just a wave of closet cheaters with a slight edge over people who don't cheat? In this case, the line between cheaters and smurfs closes to such a point that the game just feels like it has a smurfing issue to contend with instead, which can hopefully be tackled with a robust ranking system, which puts all the cheaters all in the top ranks against one another in what's almost like a hack v hack style experience. This still isn't ideal, but if it helps honest players avoid those sorts of cheaters in matches, then that's good enough. So there you go. Rather than seeing kernel level anti-cheat as being the solution to a game's cheating problem, it merely escalates the art of writing cheats to beyond kernel level. And Valve, through CSGO's lifetime, have attempted to tackle the problem of more costly and sophisticated cheating methods by using things like Prime and Trust Factor and Overwatch, simply to waste cheaters' time and money in other ways instead. No matter how sophisticated that stuff gets, VAC still has its place. It is still there to catch the casual cheaters who are using free and easily accessible cheats. VAC's limited effectiveness and delayed detection, in a way, is like a trap. Think of it as being like a shortcut in an MMO game. If it's too challenging, it will only breed better fighters to conquer it. That's what Valorant's Vanguard anti-cheat has to deal with. VAC is more like an easy shortcut where there's like a 5% chance of a really difficult monster spawning. And if you get killed by that, then you have to start the whole game again. And you're humiliated. Or better still, you don't even see a monster in that shortcut, but you've been secretly poisoned and then you die a random amount of time later. That's VAC's delayed detection system right there. So with a system like VAC, there will always be people willing to take that risk, to take that shortcut, and to hope they don't get detected by VAC. 
it only catching you 5% of the time helps lure players into a false sense of security and deters the need to have to pay for good cheats and to learn sophisticated strats to get through that shortcut because why bother when you should be fine 95% of the time? Rather selflessly, by keeping VAC basic and non-kernel level, it helps keep third-party defences like the one that Faceit uses more effective since the potential number of people willing to pay for cheats for that service remains restricted to Faceit's player base only. Problem right now is that people feel too safe with cheats, even on Valve servers. VAC isn't like a monster that spawns 5% of the time, it feels more like the monster no longer even exists. So VAC is in serious need of some major ban waves to get the level of blatant cheating under control and to salvage some of the game's credibility. In a game of cat and mouse, cheaters are seen to be very much ahead of Valve right now. So let's hope that Valve are cooking hard.